Like I said, this book is getting super interesting. We only have 40 pages left. I think it will be this video and another video, and then we will be done with the wild robot. So we are on chapter 72, The Mountain Rumble. Rico, too, stood at the mouth of the cave. Razum Unit 7134, are you in here? The only response was his own flat voice echoing back. But he sensed movement somewhere down the tunnel. So he switched on his headlights, raised his rifle, and marched inside. The Rico marched past animal bones and rock piles and, rock and wide cracks in the walls. His blocky head swiveled from side to side, scanning for any sign of Roz. But she was nowhere to be found. So he turned and marched back toward daylight. And then a deafening roar filled the cave. From the shadows flew a giant body. Mother Bear charged into the robot and smashed him against the wall. Then Nettle and Thorn jumped in and together the family went to work. They rammed his legs, they slashed his chest, they muscled him to the ground. On his way down, Rico too squeezed the trigger. There was a flash of blazing light and the walls began to crumble. Nettle grabbed her brother by the scruff and pulled him outside as an avalanche of rock thundered behind them. Mother Bear howled, the rifle exploded, stones clanged against Rico too. The avalanche slowed and settled as a cloud of dust billowed out from the cave. Mother? Nettle peered into the darkness. I'm here, said a weak voice. The young bears dashed inside and found their mother half buried. They pulled heavy stones from her body and dusted her off. I have broken bones, she rasped, but they will heal. Where is the robot? Rico II's headlights switched back on. Stones tumbled as the robot staggered to his feet. His body was scrap, scratched and scraped. His head was badly dented. His left arm was completely useless. So, thwip, it was tossed aside. The one-armed robot limped out of the cave and continued the hunt for Roz. Don't worry about me, Mother Bear growled to Nettle and Thorn. Kill the robot. With his heavy limp and his grinding gears, Rico II was easy to track. The young bears caught up with him as he was entering a grove of pines, but they didn't attack. Not yet. There was a better place to finish him off up ahead. So they hung back and followed him across the mountainside. The distant rumble of the waterfall grew louder with each passing minute, and then a slash of white appeared through the trees. Soon the robot was standing beside the rolling, the roiling, frothing river just above the falls. He was too badly damaged to leap over the falls, or to wade through the rapids to climb down the cliffs. But he had to continue his hunt for the target. So he started limping up river in search of a safer crossing. There was a rustling and the young bears exploded out from the trees. They threw their heavy shoulders against the robot's body and he stumbled sideways onto the riverbank. Nettle reared up and wrestled the robot, twisting and shaking him with all of her strength. Rico too felt his feet slipping on the rocks. He felt his body tipping over and then he plunged into the white water and he brought Nettle with him. The current immediately swept Nettle toward the falls. She rolled through the rapids, crashed into one knock, rock and then desperately clambered onto another. Rico too stood straight up and the river rushed around him. He took a step, slipped and disappeared beneath the water but then he was up again. Thorn ran to help his sister, but she was pointing up river and roaring. Use the logs! When the younger bear turned around, he saw what she meant. A jumble of broken logs were wedged between the rocks of the rapids, and a moment later, Thorn was on top of them. With water sloshing over his back, he, was for he forced a paw between the logs and pried to the, the top one loose. It splashed into the river and wound its way down through the rapids, only to roll harmlessly past the robot. Then it dropped out of sight. The bear tried again. He popped another log into the river and this one spun just in time to ram its full weight into the robot's chest. We go to, Rico too went sailing backward and sank beneath the surface. When he reappeared, the river was full of heavy wooden torpedoes. One log pounded the robot's shoulder. Another slammed his face. More logs knocked him closer and closer to the falls. The current became too much for the injured robot and it carried him away. He grasped for anything solid he could cling to, but the rocks were too slippery, so he settled for a fistful of fur. Nettle had been hanging on to one rock this whole time, but now that the robot was pulling her, she started losing her grip. She couldn't hang on much longer. Finally, she cried out, I'm sorry, Thorn, and she let go. Nettle and Rico, too, surged toward the rumbling falls. The bear felt the robot release his grip. She watched him glide over the edge, then she closed her eyes and waited for the end to come. 
but it was not Nettle's time. Reader, what happened next is hard to believe. You see, the river didn't fall away beneath Nettle, it tightened around her. Hundreds of fish surrounded the bear. They pressed their faces into her fur. They, thrashed, they thrashed their tails against the current, and they slowly pushed her away from the edge. Farther and farther they went, gradually moving upriver until Nettle's brother pulled her from the water. The bears collapsed onto the riverbank, and when they looked down, they saw hundreds of fish looking back up. Thank you, roared Nettle. I'll never eat fish again. The fish smiled and sank into the rapids. I thought you were dead, said Thorn, breathing hard. So did I, Nettle laughed. Looks like you're stuck with me a while longer, little brother. I'm not little. It felt good to joke, but the, the bears quickly turned serious. They were both bruised and bleeding, and their mother was in far worse condition. However, it would, it would all be worthwhile if Rico too had finally been killed. The bears crept to the edge of the cliff, and there at the bottom of the waterfall strewn across the, the wet rocks was the shattered body of a dead robot. Chapter 73, The Chase Rico One was standing in the great meadow. He stared up at the smoking hill of ash and then down at the stampede of footprints around it. There had been a large bonfire with hundreds of animals and one robot. But why? The Rico couldn't make any sense of what he was seeing. After thoroughly exploring the site, he continued through the meadow and into the forest. It was around that time that he lost communication with Rico Three, then Rico Two, and he knew that his partners had both been destroyed. Rico One would have to hunt down the target by himself. The hunter marched on. His blocky head swiveled from side to side, scanning for any sign of Roz. He was soon gazing across the glassy surface of a beaver pond. On the far side, a thread of smoke drifted up from another of those wooden domes. With his powerful legs, the robot launched himself up through the air, soaring in a high, graceful arc over the pond and down to the other side. His heavy feet slammed into the ground, leaving deep craters in the garden by the dome. He hunched over and looked inside, fur and feathers and the dying coals of a fire, but the target wasn't in there. The Rico stood perfectly still and watched as the soft rain started dripping down through the tears of the forest, and then he sensed it. Up in the canopy was something that didn't belong. Roz had been spotted. The hunter watched his target drop from branch to branch down to the forest floor. Then she bounded away through the thickly tangled underbrush without stirring a leaf, without snapping a twig, and vanished into the green. However, Rico One had other means of tracking her. He could sense her electronic signal. The signal was gliding around the edge of the pond, but it was fading fast. A few more seconds and he would lose it entirely. Rico One burst into a sprint. The forest seemed to sway and quake from his stomping strides, and a minute later the forest really did begin to move. Trees were toppling down onto the Rico. He fired his rifle and two toppling trees turned to ash. But then a third swung down through the smoke and hammered his body into the ground. Rico one shoved the tree aside, pulled himself up, and continued the hunt. He didn't notice the beavers diving back into the pond. Rico one tore through brambles and leaped over boulders, and suddenly the ground was caving beneath him. Down he fell into a deep pit, crashing against the bottom and twisting his leg. The robot violently pounded his leg back into shape. Then he launched himself up and out of the pit. He didn't notice the groundhogs watching from their tunnels. The hunter faced one trap after another. He was pelted with flaming pine cones and tripped by taut vines and crunched by tumbling rocks. The hunter now limped and rattled and was covered in scars, but he kept going. Roz galloped back and forth across the island again and again as she tried to lose Rico One. But no matter how fast she ran or how well she hid or how many animals helped, she couldn't escape the sound of the hunter's stomping footsteps. She had never run so hard for so long. And while her mechanical body was holding up, her wooden foot was not. After hours of, rel of relentless pounding, it finally gave out. She was galloping through the rocky forest by the sea cliffs when her foot splintered apart. As soon as Rico One found the fresh wooden splinters, he knew his target was in trouble. He stomped out from the trees onto the cliff top and scanned the coastline below. Geese were flying down through the drizzle, otters were wriggling over the rocks, seaweed and driftwood and broken robot parts were scattered about the shore. But the hunter also sensed a faint electronic signal. Roz was down there somewhere. The hunter's blocky hand clamped onto the cliff top and then thwip, it detached. The hand was connected to a strong cable that spooled out from the end of his arm. 
He gave the, the cable two quick tugs and then he stepped off the ledge. Rico one zipped down the cliffside, one arm releasing cable, the other clutching his rifle, and he slowed to a gentle stop just as he reached the ground. Then, high above, the robot's hand unclamped and followed the cable all the way down until, flip, it snapped right back into the end of his arm. Geese squawked and otter squeaked as Rico One marched through the robot gravesite. The place was littered with torsos and limbs and heads. They were all valuable parts, but he would collect them later. For now, his only concern was finding Roz. He followed the electronic signal over to a clump of seaweed, but where was his target? Was Rico One's sensor malfunctioning? The robot tapped his head a few times but the mysterious signal remained. He looked around for any other signs of her, and as he did, the clump of seaweed reached up and grasped his rifle. Okay, we're gonna stop there and then the next video will be the very end.